you that have not yet met me, my name is Gail Bunnell. I'm a speech pathologist and I'm a private practice coach. My journey with the NDIS, well, it started back, I was looking through my notes, it actually started back in 2010 before the NDIS was around really, but the Productivity Commission was looking for um, submissions from people who live with disability, who work with people with disabilities, who um, had anything to do with people with disabilities, to find out what was working and what was not working with the intention of having something like the National Disability Insurance Scheme come into being. Um, they acknowledged that the way that we were doing working with people with disabilities and the support that as a nation we were providing really wasn't enough and it wasn't good enough and that something drastic needed to happen. And so the NDIS came about because of the Productivity Commission um, with its aims of having more people in employment, helping people with disabilities to be able to participate and live full and healthy lives, including um, getting employment for carers of people with disability to be able to return to their jobs so that, or take up new careers so that they could be income earning, which means that they're also paying taxes and they're spending money down at shops, um, as are people with disabilities who have the supports they need to get out of the house and maybe go down and buy a cup of coffee. So the NDIS is built on productivity and increasing national productivity um, with a specific focus on the disability sector and also making people's lives better, really. Um, so we, the team that was on sneakily submitted a submission to that. Um, I'm not sure that we were actually meant to, but we managed to, uh, being, in, being in the government. Um, and we didn't really think much would come out, come out of it for years and years and years. And to our surprise, um, I was based in Tassie at the time. Um, in 2013, not only was the National Disability Insurance Scheme released and launched and announced as something that would be happening, um, in 2013, Tasmania became a trial site for the National Disability Insurance Scheme. Now, by the time that it happened, I was wearing many, many hats as a speech pathologist. I was still working for the government, although I had changed um, locations, I'd moved. Uh, and I was also working part-time for a not-for-profit. And I was doing a little bit of speech pathology consultancy, um, particularly on, um, over Skype, um, supporting families who were raising a child with a disability um, and have communication needs. So I was wearing a lot of hats in 2013 as the NDIS started to roll out. Um, in Tassie, it was for people aged 15 to 24, which is a very specific age group of um, school leavers and about to be school leavers. Uh, and I got to see how things are working from lots of different perspectives, from not-for-profit, from private practice, and from the government, how things were transitioning out. Come 2014, my government job ended as government jobs are sometimes a little insecure um, and funding dried up at that time and it was the push that I needed to get my butt into gear and really focus on my private practice and I started I registered as a provider and I became a registered provider um, working part-time for myself um, as well as working for a not-for-profit and we were seeing pretty much the same group of clients across all areas um, that we worked in. So I was also managing um, conflict of interest around that as well in those times. Just over 12 months after that, business, my business was doing so well and I was starting to have to decide on keeping a waiting list or turning back clients. And I decided that I would take the plunge and go full time for myself, which was incredibly exciting. And we took ourselves off on a holiday and really relaxed as we prepared for the great new adventure of um, being a private practitioner solely and wholly. And then a month after that, my husband got relocated to Canberra. Um, and a month after that, we landed in Canberra. <laughs> Now, because of a lot of the work that I'd done, um, I was able to, in promoting myself um, in my speechy TV, which some of you might have seen, um, 
I was actually able to fill my books full time in less than two weeks um, once I arrived in Canberra. In fact, before I arrived in Canberra, really. Um, but it was two weeks after I arrived that I officially realised that I was completely drowning in new clients. And I had to say, no, no more. I just need to focus on what I'm doing. Um, so that was a really fantastic experience to be able to really know that my business was built on really solid foundations and that I could carry that to a whole new location. And while I'd lived in Canberra, I hadn't been a private practice owner. It was like seven years since I'd been there. My last job wasn't even in disability. And I was able to relocate and completely fill my books so quickly. Um, I knew that I was in really good stead um, for having a really strong business foundations. And then in 2016, after so many people had been asking me questions about the NDIS and what they should do and how they should do um, all the different things to prepare themselves for private practice, I realised I didn't have much choice other than running a webinar and some workshops and helping people actually get their heads around it um, because I really didn't have time whilst running my full practice to be able to um, support people as well as run my business. So I started running these webinars, um, just like you're on here today, and sharing with people what they can do um, to understand the NDIS and to get their private practice ready um, so that they can build a thriving private practice that really supports them and sustains them, um, but also have a really nice life that you actually enjoy it and you wanna get up and keep serving the clients that you do really well and you have the energy to do that as well. A background on the NDIS. I mean, you all know what the NDIS is by now, the National Disability Insurance Scheme, and it is the biggest social change of our era. And we've heard all of that, you know, everyone's spruiking it. It's the best thing since sliced bread. It is a really massive social change, and it really is changing the way that Australians, it's beginning to change, um, that Australians see and think about disabilities um, by shifting where the funding has previously gone to a government model or a charity model to a direct user empowered model. Um, and that's a really significant thing I think about the NDIS is that it means that all sorts of businesses are thinking about different ways they can serve people who have disabilities. I've met people who are professional organisers who are NDIS registered and they're helping people, um, participants who have uh, perhaps issues with hoarding or just some executive functioning issues and they can't you know, get their house. They have them put um, organisation systems in their house so they can actually live a lot more streamlined life. Really interesting kind of work. Um, all sorts of business getting involved, but also it means that the support for people to be able to be included and participate and be directly involved in the community is there. And that has a big flow on impact economically. If somebody can, um, has the funding they need to be able to get out and about, they might be able to go and spend a couple of bucks on a coffee down the shop that has flow on effects for the community. Um, now, I've been looking at the numbers of the NDIS and this is really scary and it really points to uh, why things are happening the way they are. The NDIS currently has, and this was the official figures in the, the annual report released this week, 96,700, <laughs> 96, oh, I can't even say it, it's 96,772, 96,000 people who are now have received NDIS plans. The total number that the NDIS is banking on is 460,000 people. So we have about 360,000 more people to roll into the NDIS. Now they were originally talking 2019, which is only two years away. We now know that that is as we expected unachievable, um, but you know, at some point in the next two to five years, those 350,000 people are gonna come on board to the NDIS, uh, they're gonna have plans. Now, that shows us the scale of the problem with the NDIS is just how many plans have to be done every single day just to be able to achieve those basic numbers. It's like 100 a day, plus plan reviews on top of that, um, really huge numbers, and it shows us why things aren't 
necessarily working quite so well on the planning side as we would like. Now, the other thing we know about the NDIS is it has regional flavours, which is exactly the same as the system we have now. We know that in, in different states of Australia, there have been different systems which has resulted in different supports being available. That hasn't changed. Those different supports are still there. The organisations providing them haven't changed greatly. That is changing um, and the provider numbers coming into the NDIS are, you know, at least tripling, triple this year from the year before in every single state, sometimes tenfold higher. Um, and we know, but we also know that there are differences between metropolitan and regional areas in Australia. Always been the case with, with all services. It's always, it's one of Australia's biggest problems is providing uh, services outside major cities. And as a result, the services available are different in each area and there are unique solutions that have been implemented in each area to be able to support those people. So we know that there are regional flavours. That's still the case with the NDIS, and in particular because the states still have a, a handhold, a firm handhold, on how things are run in the different states. Um, and that's why we see things like different differences in how um, provider registration is going across different states because the states have got a big finger in the bucket. They have to because it's all legislation-based and it's state-based legislation that hasn't yet changed.